Hi guys, welcome to another Living in SA TV video, David here. Today we want to speak about a very interesting subject, especially for you guys, because we going back again to mega projects in South Africa and we're going to see 11 international car brands that actually produce cars here in South Africa and they export to many countries in the world. We're gonna speak about all that in this fantastic video. It's long because you guys are gonna learn something today. And you know what? Stay tuned because once again, this video will blow your mind. Hey guys, very interesting. So in South Africa, we have a very strong automotive industry and I will show you guys with a quick fact just now. But first of all, we have three provinces in South Africa that are famous for their car brands. First of all, we go to Gauteng, to Pretoria and Roslyn and um, Silverton are the places where uh, they are manufactured. We're going to see the brands just now. Uh, the other province is KwaZulu-Natal, KwaZulu-Natal with Pine Town and Prospecton, and finally Eastern Cape with Port Elizabeth and also with East London. We have some five quick facts here. So the first one is in South Africa, we have 31 car brands that any buyer can choose from. We have such a big ecosystem in this industry that we have 200 automotive parts manufacturers and another 150 on a non-executive basis. So this industry also contributes for 110,000 people, employees, which is great. And uh, there is actually a master plan for 2035. Why I'm saying this? Because at the moment, the biggest car hub in Africa is Morocco. Yeah, can't you believe that? Um, so we have this massive plan that I'm gonna try to make a video about so you guys can understand it. So keep that in the back of your minds. And finally, for you guys to have an idea, in 2021, South Africa manufactured and exported 461,000 cars. Okay, David, so that is highly interesting. Let me tell you guys the top 10 countries where we exported these cars. The first one is the UK, Germany, Japan, France, Australia, Italy, Belgium, USA, the Netherlands, and Austria. And uh, what are the top five cars that we export the most? Very simple, let me give you guys the top five. The top five are the Toyota Hilux uh, for the Volkswagen Polo. Uh, that is built with 60% 60 per, 60 parts made in SA. The BMW X3, Ford Ranger, and finally the Mercedes C-Class. So if you guys are riding these cars in your home country, probably they were manufactured right here in sunny South Africa. And what about this one? Mercedes wants to make their first electric car here in South Africa, the Mercedes EQ in 2022. Now, let's see the 11 investments for international car brands in South Africa. Stay tuned. Okay guys, number 11, Mahindra, 10 million investment. The Mahindra plant hopes to grow to be the biggest outside India. 40% of its workforce will be employed from local companies, while almost half of the vehicle parts will be sourced from South African manufacturers. We want to nurture this as a second home for Mahindra. We want to turn out ourselves as a true South African company. So we are starting with an SKD plant for a Bucky. We will be introducing other Bucky variants now, and then as thing progresses, we'll use this as a manufacturing facility. And the plant will have an annual production capacity of 2,500 vehicles. Mahindra is the third assembly and distribution vehicle plant in Durban after Toyota and Volvo. Luis Kumaro, SAPC News, King Shaga International Airport. So the tenth one, MAN, the trucks, with 75 million RAN investors. MAN's truck and bus assembly plant in Pinetown, South Africa, has become the first carbon neutral truck assembly facility in Africa and within MAN's global production network. In accordance with its climate change strategy, MAN identified its Pinetown plant as an ideal site to implement sustainable production methodologies and technologies, including solar energy and rainwater capturing and recycling. 
Of the 10,000 square meters of roofing covering all buildings, 6,300 square meters have been utilized to accommodate the new solar panels that power the photovoltaic system. The 580 kilowatt system is capable of generating approximately 810,000 kilowatts of power per annum, providing a surplus of energy that can be supplied to the metropolitan grid. Investing 380,000 euros in new roofing and 760,000 euros in its photovoltaic system, MAN spent a further 76,000 euros on its wash bay. It uses rainwater, which is captured from the ample roof area, stored in tanks, and used to wash vehicles and test new truck caps for any leaks as they roll off the assembly line. An oil water separator allows this water to be recycled and used again for irrigation purposes. With 160 employees, MAN's Pine Town Assembly Plant is spearheading the corporation's climate change strategy with tangible benefits for all its stakeholders. With MAN truck and bus derivatives currently setting new efficiency benchmarks in the South African commercial transport sector, the new carbon neutral status of MAN's Pine Town Assembly Plant is a powerful platform on which to gain market share in an industry that is consolidating via corporate mergers. Apart from the environmental and social benefits, MAN's new green production will also generate impressive financial advantages and contribute to a new benchmark in sustainability for the automotive industry in Africa. So next one, ninth. Hyundai, 110 million rand. But Imperial, AMH, and Hyundai Motor Company Korea are serious about the South African automotive market. This is further endorsed by their commitment to inject 110 million rand into the development and expansion of Hyundai South Africa's commercial vehicle division. Phase one complete. The commercial assembly plant in Benoni. The upgraded assembly plant in the Apex industrial area has a footprint of 32,000 square meters of which 19,000 square meters is under roof. The plant has been modernized to accept the semi-knockdown process, which will initially facilitate the assembly of Hyundai's medium commercial trucks, the HD65 and the HD72, with future consideration being given to the assembly of the ergonomically sound H100 Bucky with its expansive flat load deck. Production commenced in early July 2014. Next one, number eight, Isuzu 1.2 billion. The South African Isuzu story started in the early 1970s with the launch of the Chevrolet LUV, stands for Light Utility Vehicle. In essence, the first Isuzu Bucky, which was imported from Japan, local production of the LUV commenced in 1972 at the Kempston Road plant in Port Elizabeth, and in 1973, Isuzu-based trucks were introduced for the first time. The KB, which is unique to South Africa, was first introduced when the facelifted LUV was released in 1979, but this time branded as an Isuzu KB. The following year saw the South African introduction of the Isuzu KB40, the first petrol and diesel powered four-wheel drive pickup from Japan. By the start of the 1980s, Isuzu led the global industry in the field of direct injection diesel engines for the light trucks and in 1981 introduced a design that featured both high output and low fuel consumption and led the way with technology that made diesel more user-friendly. Isuzu has produced almost 25 million diesel engines and its pickups are available in over 100 countries. Okay, next, number seven, Nissan, three billion rand. A new dawn. After operating in South Africa for more than six decades, Nissan South Africa continues to focus on delivering quality vehicles and services to its customers. The locally produced NP200 and NP300 have proved to be dependable workhorses for the many Nissan customers' diverse needs. 
leveraging the strong relationships the corporate citizen has formed with its customers, strategic partners such as the Automotive Industry Development Center, as well as the Gauteng Provincial Government, Nissan South Africa now takes on one of its boldest goals in over a decade, the local production of the new Nissan Navara. Committed to the South African market, Nissan has invested more than 3 billion rands into preparing for the successful introduction of the locally produced new Nissan Navara. From production facility enhancements, empowering employees with technical skills, upholding global manufacturing quality standards, and ongoing supplier development. Dun, 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 dun. Number 6, Toyota, 4.3 billion. Toyota has been in South Africa since 1961. Cutting a long story short, in 2020, uh, the market was very weak because of COVID-19. Toyota remained the SA's favorite brand for the 41st consecutive year, selling an amazing 19,129 cars, buckies and trucks, to record a 23.7% market share. With a Hilux, one toner retaining its spot as the country's best-selling car or bucky. Four Toyota models, Hilux, Fortuner, IAs and Corolla Quest are manufactured and four Hino models range. Dyna 300, 500 and the 700 series are assembled at the plant or SAM also imports additional models from other Toyota affiliates around the world, which also includes models from the Lexus brand, which is basically the luxurious models inside of Toyota. Next one, five, Volkswagen, 6.1 billion rand. Yeah, marks 72 years of having the VW plant in Utenig. Thus far, over 3 million cars have come out of this factory. And at a time where the economy is sluggish, further investment and commitment is being made by the company. The upgrades to the facility has gone hand in hand with a number of employees being trained. The new Polo will see an additional shift which will increase or create 300 new jobs by April. Last year, over 110,000 cars were manufactured here. With the new model, the factory seeks to produce over 160,000, pushing up exports. Currently, the factory employs 3,800 employees, working with 1,500 suppliers. And with the new Polo, Volkswagen seeks to work with more local companies, as the new VW models are 60% local content. Going forward, all vehicles will be assembled on one line, giving the factory more flexibility. If we're body, SABC News, Utenek. And the next one is fourth, BMW, 6.2 billion. BMW plant Roslin shut down to gear up its passion for perfection. The plant underwent upgrades to welcome the next generation BMW X3. Throughout the eight-week process, 1.4 million man-hours spent between 1,700 personnel. Together, we took the substantial investment and built something priceless for our future. To give you an indication of what's done during the shutdown, there was the demolishment and construction of over 4,000 tons of rubble and steelwork that passed through our gates. This is equivalent to the demolishment and construction of 25 average sized homes in South Africa. At the heart of changes that are taking place in our plant, our associates are the main beneficiaries. For an associate that come from a spray painter background or normal operates on the floor, to become a robot programmer is a real benefit and a real motivator. When I entered this plant in the morning, I was so surprised and happy at the same time, excited in fact. Because what I noticed, I noticed the roof, the change of the roof. In this area, we had previously launched a complete new building above the old building while the production was running. During the shutdown period, we also replaced all the lifters in the assembly plant. These lifters are used to transport the cars from one conveyor to the next conveyor. So we replaced already 200 kilometers of cabling with fiber and copper. We got new high-tech switches for production logistics. We are busy with a new backup data center and we get a faster internet connection as well. We added two new robots to our sealer cell 
and we completely automated our top coat line, where we will now introduce a new integrated paint process, also known as IPP. In preparation for GO1, we had to build a new combined body stacker. The stacker itself has a capacity of 132 units. It's 43 meters long and 32 meters tall, which makes it currently one of the tallest buildings in Roslyn. Achieving a perfect launch for the production of the next generation of X3 models positions us as plant Roslyn further as a reliable partner and a competitive plant within the global production network of the BMW Group. Our new working environment shows that the company puts us first as associates. I'm really excited about the progress that we have made at Plant Roslyn. It just shows us that we're going to have a perfect launch. I commend the Plant Roslyn team that took this project seriously and gave the commitment in making it happen despite the holiday period. This demonstrates our capabilities. These we have achieved by working together, building our future together. Okay, next one, the third. Top three now, bike, 11 billion rand. Second one. Mercedes-Benz, Mercedes Mercedes-Benz making rand. an additional 3 billion rand investment in its East London manufacturing plant. Now this takes the company's total investment in the country since 2018 to 13 billion rand. Now the car manufacturer made the announcement while rolling off its first locally made new generation of C-Class. ENCA business editor Devin Murrigan has more on that story. Built with Eastern Cape hands, the first new generation C-Class rolls off the production line and is now customer ready. Mercedes-Benz operations here in East London started way back in 1954. It's now one of three international Daimler plants manufacturing the current generation of the C-Class. The new model, which created 600 new jobs, will leave this plant and is destined for more than 80 countries across the world. But having produced 650,000 units of the previous C-Class, how does the plant's success help the province with the highest unemployment rate in the country? When we started our business here with the C-Class, that is uh, more than 20 years ago, so we started with two, supply, two, so, two local suppliers here in the East London IDZ. Now we are talking about uh, more than uh, 40 suppliers that are located in, in the East London IDZ. But as is the case with other manufacturers, the full potential is being held back by erratic power supply and congested ports. We need to think bold and it means tackling the port challenge. And the port challenge basically requires very significant new investment in uh, both physical infrastructure and systems. And we have inside Transnet now a strategic vision about what they want to do. Unions have full praise for the Mercedes-Benz latest feat, but they say there's an opportunity for broader ownership empowerment in the industry. And turning to carbon footprints, Mercedes-Benz plant is expected to be 100% green ready by the end of next year. Devon Murrigan, East London. And finally, number one, Ford, 16 billion. With the one billion dollar uh, investment or over one billion dollar investment over the next few years has been happening over the last seven weeks.
significant amount of work has been done to relay the plant out so that we have less driving of the vehicle, you know, up to a kilometre less uh, driving of the vehicle. Internally, the plant has the zigzags across. Now it'll have a continual flow like water uh, running through the plant. We have a goal to improve the safety while we're doing this huge investment. Uh, ergonomic components will change, such as the skillet system here that I'm standing on, uh, that allows the vehicle to be raised and lowered according to whether it be the height of the person or the process. So to allow things to be safer, uh, physically not bending over, having to get in vehicles. The employees have started coming through in the last few weeks and uh, it's been you know, truly amazing to see the smiles on their faces, the investment, not just on the physical facilities, but they can see the change on some of the other stuff, such as gardens, the office areas. They're getting a real feel for we're committed to the change. The last seven weeks has pretty well been focusing around where I'm standing now, which is the uh, trim and final operation, but that doesn't mean the other stuff stopped. In the background, the stamping plant was delivered over the seven weeks. Majority of it is in the ground, I'd say, to around 70%. The body shop has continued. They've got some significant facility introductions there. They're in place and pulling together, once again, the same facilities that are in the Thai plants. As they're learning things through their build phases, we're implementing those changes here. So we, we are actually learning from the best practice plants, the plants that are doing it, and putting it in before we launch the vehicle. So we have a real good chance of being at a much higher launch uh, level than those Thailand plants because we can learn from them. The SEZ is an amazing place to go visit. It just goes from a no building to a building. And it's amazing that you know, 12 months ago, as I said, that was a piece of dirt. And today that there's a, a building there, they've got a manufacturing there. It's, it's a really exciting time for Port South Africa, but not just Port South Africa, I think for the community. You get the community feel around. It's not all internal, there's so much external and the community can see that. And they're knocking on the doors looking for work. Yeah, there's so many people out there without work that are seeing this as a great opportunity to grow. It's really great to see the smiles that we're bringing to people's faces and the family members of the site that they can see a future for their children and that they actually can get them in and start working here. So, you know, the advantage of what we have today is that it's, it's, it's making the picture true to people. You know, they've heard the words, heard about the investment, but once you start seeing buildings go up and facilities go in place and, and the quality level of lifestyle change that the people are going to have, they're really getting energised by it, so it's, you know, it's really good to be part of. Whew, I can't take that Nissan Navarro, the grey one, out of my mind. It's just the most beautiful bucky pickup, whatever you want to call it, that, that I've ever seen. It's just so beautiful. And all of these cars are made in South Africa, and I just love the blend of, of cultures coming together, training our people um, to be better professionals, to give them a livelihood, you know, and uh, which one of these projects, guys, to give you an idea, BMW alone employs 5,000 people, you know, everything, all of these projects employ a lot of people in the communities that surrounds them. Them, and that's just beautiful and I gave you 11 reasons to take South Africa seriously and the guys once again don't forget to share subscribe and destroy that like button and I will see you in the next TV video